Today we're going to make baby back ribs in the master built electric smoker. Let's get started. Chef Bob here today and today we're going to make some baby back ribs in the master built electric smoker. It's pretty easy. We're going to follow a classic 3-2-1 a recipe, a technique of uh, cooking the baby back ribs. So what I have here is just a rack of ribs, baby back ribs, pork ribs, and the membrane uh, was removed from the from the back side. And I'm just putting some gloves on here. And what we're going to do is all you'll need is some rub. And I'm using a prepackaged rub. Today I'm using a Bad Byron's butt rub. But you can use any store-bought rub or homemade seasoning mix. And in another video I'll show you how to make your own. But uh, so right now we're just going to use that. And I have the rack here. Now the first thing I think I'll do just to make my life easier is to just cut the rack in half. So I'm just going to put it on this cutting board and just cut the rack in half. That's just going to make it easier all the way around to uh, work with that. That's about right. Okay, let's get the pan back here. So now, I'm just going to take our rub and liberally apply it all over and rub it in. We didn't do anything to the ribs. We didn't pre-treat them with anything. They weren't marinated. We're just going to put a dry rub on them. And just pat it on. So what we'll do is, and then I'll show you how to uh, prep the smoker. But this is the first step. And when you do the 3-2-1 method, you're actually layering the flavors. And it's three different phases. That's why it's called the 3-2-1. So the first step, we're going to be three hours with the dry rub. And we're going to be getting the smokiness into the meat. And then you'll see when we go to step two, we're going to foil it. And you usually want to put some type of juice in with the meat. And there you're, you're more or less tenderizing it. You've gotten the smoke flavor in phase one. Phase two, you're tenderizing it in some type of juice or broth or marinade. And step three is when you add your final bit of uh, barbecue sauce and get it. So there you go. You see, all I've done was very quickly covered everything with a nice dry rub mixture. So for the next step, I'll meet you all back at the smoker. And this is what it should look like right now at this phase. So let's go outside. Okay everybody, here we are with the master of electric smoker. I have a preheating to 225, phase one of the 321 recipe is three hours at 225. So I've turned it on and now I'm going to fill the water pan with some water that I boiled ahead of time. No sense in heating up a pan of cold water. Now I'll add our racks. We'll be using two racks. And you'll see I put our dry rubbed ribs in these vented smoking pans I've used before in other videos. Um, I like these a lot. They're uh, non-stick coated. They come in handy for putting the food in and out of the smoker. Actually, I'm going to lift this rack up one notch higher to make it easier. So, that's the handle this way. And we can also stick our probe in one of the sections of ribs. Just insert it into a big part. It's not really that critical. It's just if you want to to monitor because we still have two other stages to go. We'll lock our door. Now, as far as the chips, I have some ski chips. I have some soaking the water and I have some dry ones. What we'll do is we're going to use primarily the wet ones. 
but we're also going to put a couple dry ones in. Just fill your smoker cup. Don't overfill it, it'll just be difficult to turn. Dry. Just slide it in and rotate it in the direction of the arrow. There. So now we're going to leave it set at uh, 225 for three hours. We'll check on the uh, wood chips about every hour we'll add as needed. But uh, basically that's it. So stage one, three hours with the dry rub at 225. So I'll see you back here in about three hours. Okay, we're back. It's been about three hours. They've been in here three hours for at uh, 225 with the dry rub on. So now we're gonna take them out and take them inside, wrap them up and start phase two, which is two hours wrapped up with uh, some type of saucer marinade. So let's see how they look right now. Put my silicone gloves on because they're going to be hot. And there you go, they're looking pretty good right now. And this is just with the dry rub. And mesquite chips. Take the probe out. And they're looking very good right now. So what we'll do is I'll take them inside, wrap them up. So follow me inside for step two. Okay, everybody. I just brought them in from outside. You saw me out there. They're out there for three hours, 225 dry rub. Now we start phase two. two uh, phase two will be two hours with some onions and we're going to use some apple juice to keep them moist. This is sort of where it performs the braising step or the tenderizing step. So phase one was just to get that good dry rub uh, smoky flavor in there. And now we're going to put them, oh, normally what you do is a lot of people see wrap them up in foil. So instead of wrapping them up in foil, I'm going to do it the easy way and just use some of these metal 9x13s with metal covers. They all save the same purpose and it's a lot easier to do. But before I do that, instead of just putting apple juice in there, I have uh, an onion that I cut in half, and I'm just going to cut that onion and put that in here with the apple juice so when they slow braise for two hours, it'll help give a little more flavor. So I'm just going to do um, like a really large slice on these. And that's all I need for that. So what we'll do is, these are red hot because I just pulled them in off the grill. We'll put one in there. And I'll just put just put some of the onion in here, just lay it around. And now we'll put, and you can use any type of juice or marinade that you want. And this is really just to keep it moist and uh, help to, to braise more or less. You don't need a lot in there because it's going to be sealed. So that's it. That's all you need. I'll put the lid on that. Now we'll get the second one, and we're going to do the same thing. We we'll take our other half rack, put it in here, and as you can see, oops, I'm peeling the bark off. It's already very tender. I just want to show you the uh, underside if I can here. You see it got really nice from the first three hours with the smoke and the dry rub. So again, I'm just going to put the onion in here, just throw it around, put the apple juice on it. And a little on the bottom of the pan. That's all you need. I'll put the lids on, and I'm going to take them back outside in the smoker for two more hours at 225. Okay? Let's go outside. Okay, so here we are. Uh, they've been in here for two hours. This is step two of the 321 method. They're in here covered with apple juice and onion. And what we'll do at this stage as I'm going to take them out of here from these covered containers, we'll go inside and I'll show you step three where you cover them with sauce and put them in for the last hour to get them nice and gooey and barbecuey and delicious. So let me get these out of here and we'll go inside. Okay, I just brought these ribs in from outside. We had them in there for two hours at 225 and these containers are very hot so let me put these gloves on so I don't burn myself. And you can see here they are after they've been in there for
for uh, two hours at 225 with the apple juice and the onion. And this, again, like I said, was sort of the braising step. This is what helps make them uh, very, very tender. I mean, they're tender just from cooking at such a long period of time at a low heat. But this is just what really uh, adds to it. So what we'll do now is the final step. And let me keep one glove on. And we're going to do is I'm going to uh, cover them with barbecue sauce. And then we'll put them out there for one more hour. So I'm going to use this. Whoa. <laughs> Did you see that? It's already that tender. I may have trouble putting it on the rib rack. In fact, seeing that, I think I'm better off going to plan B. Let's put this aside. And I'm going to use the original pans I used the first time the slotted barbecue smoking pans because it looks like they're so tender I'm going to have an issue in fact I'm not even sure this is going to be a little trickier than I thought so let's say I just have some barbecue sauce in here and a silicone uh, basting brush or saucing brush so I'm just going to try to sauce them up in here and put them on this tray and then what I'll do is they're going to be out there for an hour so maybe maybe every I don't know, 15 minutes sounds a little er, you know, a little soon, but I'll go out there maybe and just flip them in here and try to get them. In fact, I'll do it like that originally. That's what we'll do. Maybe every 15 minutes, I'll open up the smoker out there and I'll just flip them over and put more sauce. You can see how tender these are going to be. I mean, they're already falling off the bone. This is unbelievable. Wow. Let me do this one the same way. First I'll do the top, then I'll go out there and flip it, and then flip it two more times. That way we'll try to get this barbecue sauce uh, nice and baked in, a little gooey on there, really get that flavor in there. You can see, these are just falling apart already on me. I'm able to, well, you know what, I'm not going to crowd them. I'm not going to put them all in one pan. We'll just use two pans like before. That's all there is to it. Now this 3 to one method, you know, as you can see, uh, is almost, you know, foolproof. As long as you keep the temperature low, don't, uh, just watch your temperatures. Let me push this one aside, and I'm going to grab the other pan, and we're going to do the same thing. Maybe I can keep this one whole, maybe not. Actually, I'll transfer it to this pan, and we'll do the undersides on this one first. Oh yeah, this one's super tender also. It's going to be difficult for me to transfer it there without it just falling apart. But use your favorite uh, barbecue sauce. We put the dry rub originally, then this apple juice and onion in here. Let's see if I'm lucky and I can get it to stay whole. And I'm, nope, I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, look, look at this. <laughs> wow. There's a bone. All right. Let me sauce the top side up. And we're going to get this out there. You know what? I don't know if I'm going to be able to flip this that many times out there. They'll just fall apart completely. They're so tender. But we'll see what we can do. I'll let you know what I wind up doing. I'll show you when I take them out there. I'll just show you one more time out of the smoker. Then we'll bring them back in for the final taste, and I'll let you know how many times I flip them and cover them with sauce. I'll flip them maybe two times. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, let me get these out there. As you can see, I mean, look, these look beautiful already. So let me get these out there, and uh, we'll, I'll show you what it looks like out there. Let's go. Okay, we just sauced them inside as you watched me do that with the uh, basting brush, the silicone basting brush. We put some barbecue sauce on both sides. We put them back in our original smoking pans because they were too tender to put in the rib rack. They were just falling apart on us. This is still at 225. There's still water in there. You don't need to worry too much about the smoke at this point. So, just slide that one in there. So now we're going to do uh, the final hour at 225. Then we'll take them out, go inside, and uh, give them a taste. Oh, what I'm going to do in this last hour, uh, maybe two or three times, I'll pull them out, flip them over, and put more sauce on them.
That way we'll get a good thick coating of sauce. So, you know, flip them, you know, two, three times, whatever you want to do just to get a good coating. And uh, then I'll tell you how many times once we get them inside and we'll go have a taste. Okay, this is it. It's been in for the final hour with sauce. I only re them once. I came out one time and uh, turned them, flipped them around and put some sauce on them because they were just too tender. I couldn't do it more than that. They look great. Let's get these inside and try them out. Okay, everybody, this is the moment we've been waiting for. You just saw me outside bringing these in, and here they are. I let them, I let them cool for a couple of minutes so I don't burn my hands and my mouth too much. But I was only able to resauce them one time outside. They were so tender, they were falling apart. So they were out there for one hour, 225, with the sauce in these vented barbecue uh, smoking grilling pans. And I just sauced the tops and bottoms one additional time because they were just too tender. So now, I'll try to uh, plate these up. Oh, and one thing I'd like to point out, and I'd like to give you different ideas and tips. Remember the apple juice and onions that we used in step two? I saved that and I put it in a frying pan, as you can see, and I just uh, reduced it a little bit. And this is great if, if you're not gonna eat them just as you know a standard rib, but say you wanna make rib sandwiches. So what you could do is put some of that rib meat on a bun, and some of this delicious uh, sweet apple onion drippings here, this sauce, and, and this is just, this is fantastic. This is apple juice, onions. I did add a little a fresh ground salt and pepper. So that's salt and pepper. I just want to mention that. Now, let's see if I will be able to pull these out of here to present them without them just totally falling apart. Uh, we got lucky with that one. Let's try this. This one's going to be tricky. There we go. We lost a bone. All right. So, let me put these up to the camera so you can see them. Look at this. These are delicious baby back ribs. I, I can tell it before I even taste them. I know they're going to be super delicious. You saw how tender they were before. So, let me uh, take one and give it a try. Let me clean up my mess here. All right, let me, where's the, oh, let's grab the knife here. Pull this out, I'll take this piece. Slice off a rib. Oh, well, here, I, should, I didn't even need the knife, look. Did you see that, I just, I just pulled the bone right out. Mm. Okay, now, let's try this. Oh, and also, you know, when you're serving these, it's, you know, you can have some extra sauce on the side. You want to put a little extra sauce on? Go right ahead. Let's try this. Sit. Look at, look at, look at that. This is just delicious 3-2-1 ribs in the Master Build Electric Smoker. Here we go. Mmm. 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 I can't talk. I'm speechless. One more bite. I have to have one more bite. Mmm. Mmm. Phenomenal. Over the top phenomenal. But wait a minute. Let's give you another idea. Instead of just eating them like standard ribs, what if, as I mentioned, we have some chips, maybe some pickles, and we make, say, a little, uh, a little rib witch here. Let's pull some of this meat off. Huh? Make a little ribwich sandwich, you know what I'm saying? Put it on there. Now we put some of this apple onion sauce on top of the ribwich. Oh, baby. Look at that, a little of that. Maybe a little uh, sauce on the bun here. Look at this. Now look at this. Look. Look at that sandwich. I'm going to try this. And I recommend, you know, you try this too. Mmm. Oh, oh, oh. Mmm. The onions on top of this delicious. Oh, mmm. 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 Mmm.
I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have a pickle. Mmm. Mmm. You really gotta try this. Please try these three, two, one ribs at home. I did make, I'm gonna confess, I made one major mistake. Did you catch it? I only made one rack. <laughs> Trust me, if you do this, fill your master built smoker up with as many racks as you can put in there. Because when you try these, you're gonna love them. They're so full of flavor. You know, some of the tricks were, you know, when you add the second stage, when you add your juice, you know, a lot of people tell you to add an apple juice or whatever. Put the onion in like I did. It adds just that extra flavor. Make sure they're covered. <coughs> Excuse me. And you saw I use those uh, 9 by 13 covered tin instead of foil because sometimes foil will rip and leak on you and you'll have a mess and you'll be frustrated and the ribs will dry out. So, if you can, use a pot or pan with a lid. That will make it a lot easier for you for step two. Uh, step one was just a dry rub and step three was just saucing. So, I'll just go over it real quick. Three hours with a dry rub, 225 in the smoker. Stage two, two hours covered with sauce, uh, juice and onions, apple juice, any kind of fruit juice, onions. Stage three, one hour, open, vented again in the smoker with just your sauce on to get it baked in. And then save your sauce with your onions to make a delicious sandwich. Serve it any way you like. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please press the like, thumbs up, subscribe button, hit that little notification bell so you know the next time I put a video. And leave some comments. Let me know what you thought about this video. If you've tried these ribs, how they turn out for you. I'm sure they'll be great and fantastic. Um, also, if you have any other requests for videos using the Master Belt Smoker or Pellet Grill or any other type of recipe or cooking technique, please leave a comment and let me know. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And this, again, this these are about the best ribs I've ever had. I mean, really. It's phenomenal. I'm not just saying that. It is fantastic. So please try it. And uh, thank you for watching. I am definitely going to have some more right now. Excuse me. Mm. <laughs> mm. The onions just put it over the top. Mm. 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 It's unbelievable. Only one rack I made. I could cry. God, if I can't look like these, oh, 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 oh. Mm. so tender, so flavorful, oh, mm. oh. <laughs> mm.